This video is brought to you by Repl.it, a powerful platform for educators, learners, and developers that makes coding and collaborating easy. Use the name Sean Pritchard in the link below to sign up today and start programming in your browser. All right, so welcome back to this last video in our JavaScript loop series, where today we are going to talk about sets. Now, set is a data structure um, that is really cool because what it is is, is set is uh, objects that are used as collections. Basically, we can use the set to collect values and we can have a unique set of specific values. Now, the cool thing about set is that it comes with its own operators, which I'm going to show you how to use here in a minute. But the, uh, the base thing about this is that values may only occur once within a set. And I'm going to show you how this works. Now, like set, it does have a predecessor called weak set, which holds that weak reference uh, to the actual set. Um, that you know helps without the memory leaks that set cause just like the weak map uh, So when the information is stored within the browser cache uh, Weak set only holds a reference to it instead of directly Allocating the values which are in the set which gives us a lot more opportunity to change values work with these and mutate Different information for our needs. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about today Even though it's my last video and I should have mentioned this videos before is that you know There's a lot of great videos out there um, all over the internet and one of my peeves about watching videos is when you know I've come across you know people teaching you know subject matter such as data structures for instance um, They they show you how to use them. They show you everything About them and you can learn really well of what they do, but nobody's really talking about where you would actually apply these data structures, how you would actually use them in the real world. Would you would you use them um, on your website? Do you use them in an app? Like how do you use them? Where, when do I need to pull this out of my toolbox to actually use it? And that is something that I'm going to be doing moving forward, starting with this video right here and all the videos I got. I want to give you guys a sense of basically where you can use these things at in real life. So let's look at what a set is, okay? So we can add tons of different information into a set. We can add basic values, strings, symbols, uh, objects and arrays, and we can combine them all into one set, which is a unique collection of, of objects. But where can we use that for? Well, in the real world, let's say you had uh, a database with a bunch of usernames in it, and you had objects kind of like we have down here with you know names, phone numbers, emails, plus you know you have you want to collect all their likes and you want to collect how many times they've shared certain photos and say you've got you know a database full of information out and you want to create a set so you can analyze that type of information or maybe you have to you know delete a user out of your database and you want to um, have a set of information where you can loop through uh, and to find john smith and find the right one attributed by you know his i his id number the the key number that represents um his specific set uh, of information that's where we would use something like this to apply it to we would use it to have a unique set of values uh, that we could attribute it that way we can mutate it manipulate it store it or delete the information um, you know for a web application and, and that's kind of what we set here so if you want a unique unique set of information then we're gonna pull out a set so let's go ahead and let's run this and let's see how it works so basically what we're doing is we're establishing a variable called my set here we're using the constructor method to call set and what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the um, in-house operator methods that come with set uh, to add values to this so right now we're just going to add numeric values and I got a couple of them here uh, just to kind of boast it up and show you what it's about so when I run this you see that we got four twenty two and three well if you look here I've got two different fours here now if I change this twenty two to four and run this again watch what happens well we got four and three now that is because a set a value may only occur once no redundant information and the order of this information does matter so watch the order of this even though we have three fours here I'm gonna go ahead and unmark this and we're gonna put the word hello in there let me run this and you see that hello comes in right after this now if I was to put this over here type hello add that string in you see it's going to be here in the value unlike other arrays this is immutable meaning that we can't mutate the values in we can delete them out of there we can call references to them uh, but it's an immutable data structure that we can use and Python actually has a very similar data structure 
um, that can be attributed to their set of tools as well. And I'm actually going to be building a video that compares JavaScript and Python to kind of simplify some of the different things like you know we have list dictionaries and tuples and pythons and we have objects and arrays well i'm going to kind of combine that together and kind of even out and show you plus i'm going to be making some new videos i just wanted to talk about uh to help people a lot of people who are you know from 25 30 30 on up to 40 you know people who have tried doing something else in life or maybe coming out of you know construction or whatever it is um you know or you know being a lawyer or whatever but you want to get into developing you 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 like code and you, you, it makes you you know wonder and curious and you get you know excited about taking this type of work right here and applying it to create amazing things and if that sounds like you and you think it might be too late for you to get in the game I'm here to tell you that it's not and I'm gonna be making some videos that are going to help boost uh, your sense of ability to get into the game and start programming really fast really quick um, and I'm gonna lay out everything so you have that light bulb moment of how everything works and goes together so you have a path of where to start and where to begin but enough of that promo let's go ahead and let's finish this off let's go ahead and let's add a symbol just for his sakes i guess we got both of those and let's add this and you can see we have a symbol and let's add our little object here john smith even though i didn't put his last name in there we're going to add that now this is all based off of using the add method now we got different operators we can delete values we can see what values are in there we can clear values out um, of just the data set while still having it uh, substantiated um, and we can add things and we can get the size of the values which are in our set so we've got a lot of tools that are dispensal uh, or dispense dispensal I don't even know if that's a real word uh, but at our dispense to actually you know work with the data in these arrays say we needed to pull out uh, John Smith's information his last message which said hello and that was his hashtag and he got four likes and three shares on you know something he did we, we pull out a little set based off this information it's unique just to his profile and then we can analyze this and compare different sets of information um, with different users with his and his values so you can see how this would actually you know come alive and I, I like to use the social media reference because everybody uses social media and if we were to apply that this knowledge to that um, essentially everything else is kind of built around that same sense when it comes to web applications today so either way I digress let's go ahead and let's delete some values so to delete values we just call the delete method and um, I can delete the whole thing by calling this and we're gonna get false back it means there's nothing in there there is no set but I could call and just delete a, a number so or a value or a string so let's call this and now it's true now that means that this set still exists but the number four within that set does not so let's go ahead and let's close that out and let's check to see what is in our set now we just deleted that so and but we're gonna run it again so it's gonna show back up but we're gonna see if the number four is in that set so let's run that and it says true now let's turn this delete back on so we can delete the number four then it's going to delete it and then it's going to tell us if we have it false that's because right before it's telling us what we have in there it goes ahead and delete it and you can see how you know we can use this to test out what is in our set and get different values back and have a unique uh, set of objects and values that we can work with now I'm going to go ahead and turn these off and then we're going to just clear out the number four and then we're going to test to see that if that value is still in there so let's uh well let's do this let's run it again make sure we get a full value boom it's all in there let's go ahead and now run it with this clear and it just cleared everything out now let's go ahead and see if uh, the value four is in there does the set have Four and it says false that is because we cleared the whole thing out now let's go ahead and mark that out and let's go ahead and go to my set and let's add something to it let's add uh, the number 76 so let's run and you see it just added it to the bottom right after our object and that's the cool thing about this we keep adding anything we want and build a set of information out of arrays out of objects and basically anything we want and we can iterate through this uh, process which I'm going to show you how to do real quick now let's go ahead and check the size of this and it's going to tell us how many values are in our set 
We've got six values in our set. And let's concur with that. Let's count them up. Let's run that. We see that one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it tells us how many values are in our set. We can use this as another function to check if we're comparing different profiles, say, uh, like my hypothetical scenario I just told you uh, before, then we're pulling a bunch of different profiles, like everybody out of the, the, the state of Maine or something, then we can make sure that they all have uh, the same size so we can run, you know, analyses on it that perpetuates our end goal and is all even. So let's go ahead and mark these out. And now we're going to get into iteration. So we can use several different methods of iteration um, on a set, just like we can with uh, the maps, weak maps, regular objects, and arrays. We're going to use the for of um, loop here, and we're going to loop through to see the keys, and we're going to see if those key values get logged out. And let's run this. So you see, basically, it's going to repeat everything because everything has an individual key on its own. Um, so let's. Uh, Let's put it in there. <laughs> there we go, four. That. And you see that uh, it gives us the first four values. Now, if I go to three, and you can see here that uh, we've got a whole different set of information. This term white, this is collecting this as an object uh, on its own, but the key set of the object. Now, let's go ahead and let's try this out. And we're gonna pull this out. We're gonna use the of statement. We're gonna get values out of it because we can get the keys and the values out of our set. Um, and if I run this, run that, and well, let's add this with J again, just so I can distribute this to it. And you can see that it adds it together. Um, so J plus J doubles everything within our set. So we have all kinds of ways to iterate and manipulate through this. Um, but being this, we can, uh, you know, if I take everything out here, all these numbers, and we're just to use the object value, we can run through the key values of the set. Because again, we can have a set full of key values. And we can run through there and grab those out. Now, let's go to this new instance. I'm gonna get rid of this right here as well. And we're going to do another loop where we don't need that info. And let's remove some repeating numbers. All right. So in order to do that, I've just got a constant called numbers here. I've got a big old array. And you can see there's a lot of duplicate values in there, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to console log uh, using the spread operator uh, in the new set where we're going to take some numbers from an array. Uh, and we're actually going to take those array numbers and we're going to put them into a set as opposed to calling a set and using the add method. So this is a way we can actually add information to a set um, without having to call any of its fancy little operators. So we're gonna call that, we're gonna see what we put in here, and then we're gonna log that again so that way we can see what the values are. And you can see here that numbers itself, these are all the numbers, it's, it's a full array, but you can see here that it's re gotten rid of all the duplicate values, and that's what's really cool. Um, now, if these were all likes, for uh, our little hypothetical user up there, say a couple of these were, uh, you know, the number of likes on a post, but they were, um, these are duplicates for the same post or something. We don't want duplicates. We want the original values. All right. Now this is just one hypothetical example. I'm sure you can come up with a bunch more, but it's really convenient to have this type of data structure to work with. Now let's go down here. Uh, we're going to delete, check the size of an object, and do some real fun stuff. So. Let's my set add, and you're gonna see we have a setup here with some key value pairs. Now, I could run those functions up there and get the keys and the values out of these, because this is an actual key value pair set. Um, now, let's go ahead and start deleting some information from that set. Now, we're gonna use the for each loop, um, giving us a, a pretty big rack on using all the different loop structures that we've talked about before to iterate through there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass out uh, through a parameter here using the fat arrow function and we're going to check the object um, with the parameter value y here um, and we're going to look for this y and if it's less than 20 
uh, we're going to delete those objects out of there. So let's go ahead, let's run this and see what happens. Oops, I forgot a little piece of it. So let's do this. Then we can see what size we have in here. And you can see that it's less than two. We've deleted objects out of here that were two. Now let's go back to putting this to 10 and let's flip that back out of there. And let's run that again. Now you can see that it's deleted the object out of there again. And then the size of our set uh, based off of our two objects in here. Um, has been deleted so we've got all kinds of different ways we can work with these sets and what we can use them for and I hope I've given you a good explanation if you need a different explanation or you really didn't get it leave a comment below um, in the video and I'll be more than happy to try to explain you know where we can use these things at and where you can get more information to help you now um, as far as the weak set goes I'm not gonna go through a bunch of examples because it's the same exact thing you just got to know that a weak set has that weak reference so that means it's taking a reference to the actual values stored um, let's go close this out so we can get a visual representation our set here these values are stored directly in the set the data structure itself so what a weak set does is it copies this and makes a reference to it so it shows us the values um, based off there um, that we can actually work with uh, instead of actually the values so that way these values are set in stone basically within the memory of your browser and within the compiler here uh, where the reference values we can change those and we can manipulate them and it doesn't affect these actual stored values so think of a set and a map as like hard-coded like a little miniature database for these data structures and where the weak sets and weak maps those are more uh, taking a copy of them so we can work with them and manipulate them. So that's all I got for you. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like. Um, and don't forget to share these videos if you think it will help anybody else you know or anybody else that you know it's program. If you got any suggestions for me you want to learn about anything, please let me know below. Um, I'm going to be coming out with all kinds of cool videos plus a story because probably a lot of you don't even know who the hell I am. But you're going to find out soon. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty harsh story, but um, I think you guys are going to like it. And I've uh, got lots of plans for new and upcoming videos. They're going to help people out. I want to help people that are just getting into this field, um, you know, getting into the game later in life. And, and that is who my target audience is, basically. But anybody, even if you're younger and this can help you, cool. Um, I mean, coding is for everybody. It's not just for everybody. But I do want to give a lot of information to help people, uh, to give them the, the shortcuts that I use to get to where I'm at today and uh, basically to put the cookies on the bottom shelf for you when it comes to programming so other than that uh don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and um, i hope you guys take care have a great week hey do you want to know what type of gear i'm using or what type of computer build i've got or maybe you're just looking for quality gear that has been tested and researched personally by me well so head over to kit.co forward slash sean to find out